player 2 has joined the game. Hey yo, what's up everybody? Welcome to episode 354 of the Two Player Co-op Podcast. As always, I'm one of your host here, Kevin, along with my brother from my mother, Remote Sean. Like uh, your name we is, remote doing. Like your name is Remote Sean or something. I don't know. This is the first time you're ever seeing, hearing, or listening to us. This is the Two Player Co-op Podcast. We're just about every week. Two brothers get together to tell you everything you need to know about in the world of video games and also in the world of wrestling sometimes as well. If you like that, make sure to like the video, subscribe, share it with your friends, family, and everyone, and be twixt. If you really like us, you can go to patreon.com slash two player co-op where we got a lot of different benefits. And we got we got a lot of damn it. Now I can't even think of the quote. I got a lot of problem. I got a lot of benefits for you people. Now you're gonna hear about it. Uh Dr. Marty Pets. The most popular tier is the producer tier, the $5 tier, which lets you watch us record the podcast live on YouTube as we are doing right now. You also get a bonus episode every month. Let me know what you guys thought of the bonus episode that we put up last week. If you liked it, didn't like it, want to see more, just let me know. Um, and then you also get the podcast live one day early on YouTube. I will say, except this week, because we're not recording until Thursday because life gets in the way. So I'm going to put it up for everybody tomorrow on Friday because I don't want to deal with it on the weekend. So... Those are the benefits. But some of our patrons deserve a shout, just like the man with the bar named after him, our patron saint, Mr. John Tinkley. Also, our affiliates, Derek Bamford, James Solar. Make sure you check out James Games and more on YouTube. And Mom, as well as our producers, Steve Appleton, Aunt Sue, Dustin Downs, and Chris Peralta. Also, make sure you check out PS Rewind on YouTube as well. If you like cool t-shirts and the like, you can always go to Teespring dot com slash store slash two player co-op at some point i probably need to look at that and figure because the last time i looked there like when i ordered the sticker for my ipad you know the metal gear solid logo sticker and yeah. uh the, all we had was the metal gear solid on there i don't know i don't know it's like we we set that store up five years ago or something we haven't done anything to it since so i don't know maybe we only have the metal gear logo up but whatever we'll figure it out so, Sean, Steve Appleton, what's up, dude? He's not super quiet, just now his audible is Kevin. Okay. Good to see you, Steve. Um, yeah. What do you mean, eh? I was like, eh, I think it's fine. Oh, your audio. I thought you were saying, eh, to Steve. I was like, dude. No, oh, no, Steve's we love never Steve. here. I was like, what are you talking about? Don't be like that. Um, so, Sean and I had a fun, uh, a fun thing happen on Monday. I took a personal day off work. I guess you did too. Or did you <laughs> work remote from the No, nah, I, I took ride? it off. Okay. And we drove about two hours away to uh, a state park that I can't remember the name of outside Paragould, Arkansas. Crowley's Ridge or something. That sounds right. Hey, Derek, what's up? Um, And we were in the path of 100% totality on the eclipse. And I do have to say, before we did it, I was like, I can't believe I really took a day off to go watch an eclipse because the only time I can remember paying attention to an eclipse was the one, you know, five years ago or whatever. When I walked outside of our work office, I looked up and I was like, yeah, okay. All right. Back to work, I guess. I didn't know. Yeah. I didn't really know what totality actually meant. So Holy crap. I did it was from... one of the, it was one of the coolest things I've ever experienced in my life. Even though yeah. the, the drive home took twice as long because everybody was driving home, it was so worth it. I will never forget it as long as I live. I felt like I knew what to expect, but even still, actually going through it still blew my mind. Um, I'm glad I decided to go. I mean, I was never really questioning it, but like... Memphis, I think, was like 95% totality. I saw something. somebody on Facebook said 98. Maybe, yeah. But I don't know. But that extra 2%. Oh, my God. Yeah. Like, makes all the difference. Because if it's not, if you're not first, you're last. If it's not 100%, it's not an eclipse. Like, it was pretty cool. Watching it gradually look a little bit darker, but more just weird outside mm -hmm. and then it was literally not until like 99.9 percent .9 still wasn't that cool but at a hundred percent it was the craziest thing i've ever seen 
and I've seen pictures and like, yeah. I'm like, okay, yeah, well, that's how it looks when people take pictures of it. It's just a black, a black hole with like white, you know, around yeah. it and whatever. I'm like, but that's just how it shows up in pictures. It can't be that like black and white in real life, but it is. That's exactly what it looked like. And yeah, it was mind blowing, like absolutely mind blowing. There's not another one in the States till 2044 or 49 or and something. And I think it's yeah. just like up in like North Dakota, South Dakota. Like it's way up north, nowhere near us. I don't think we'll be going to that one. No. Um, but if any of you happen to find yourselves in the area or you've never been to a total eclipse, of that's another thing. This is a total eclipse. The one that was back in like October, or whatever, was an A, we weren't in totality if that's even a thing but that was an annular eclipse and i don't okay. know what the difference is i don't know if that has to do with where the moon is and like the moon wasn't quote unquote big enough to block out the sun and that's what makes it an annular versus a total eclipse so but like if you've never been in totality for a total eclipse you've got to find a way to experience it like that's all i heard the coverage for this eclipse, I will say, was a bit crazy. It was on, like, every channel. I'm like, we can just kind of cover it the day of. I don't think we need to make this a whole thing. But everybody says, like, if you've never done it, you can't even begin to imagine what it's like. And I will say that's 100% true. Uh, if you didn't make it to this one, if you've never been in totality for a total eclipse, find a way to make it happen. It'll blow your mind. I also think when you compare the annular, is that what you called it? Um, yeah. To the total eclipse, it, it really comes down to whether the heart is involved or not. Probably, yes. Yeah. Uh, Derek yeah. says, someone at work drove four hours to see it and then eight hours to get back. F that. So, yeah, we only had I to mean, drive yeah. a little bit it over was two, two to get there and yeah. four to get back. Yep. And it was like 55 wasn't moving at one point. You know, Google Maps was like, hey, go this way. It'll be faster. I'm like, okay. I get off onto some back road, back like country highway or something. I'm like, okay. And I drive for like a minute and then we're stopped. And then I look over at 55 from there. I'm like, oh yeah, they're not moving either. This is, this is awesome. So I just put my AirPod Pros on. Speaking of noise canceling, I was like, I'm just going to listen to whatever podcast came out today. First things first or something on the way home and just try to not be stressed out. Um, but yeah, it was totally worth it. And I sent like uh, in our work group, all the different managers on my team. We had our team call today and had to do it. I had to do a service review and everything. And I kicked ass, of course. <laughs> excuse me. Um, but then I told, you know, I told, I'd already told my boss that I was going and she's like, Oh, you got to share it on the call. So I, and I told everybody and they're like, Oh, that's awesome. And then I sent, uh, some of the pictures I took and I was like, this does not do it justice. I mean, here's a picture. Like you said, it's a black hole with some white around it, but until you're there and until you see everything just go freaking dark. And like you were saying, even before it goes dark, when it is just like, you're looking and you're like, why the hell is everything like, this color? Something looks yeah. weird. Yeah. It's not even like, it's not like it is like at dusk or, or even no, you know, totally sunrise different. or anything. It's so different. It was so freaking cool. Um, I loved it. I'm glad we did it. Um, it's, it's easy to say that now that I'm not in the middle of a four hour drive, but totally worth it. It was awesome. Next up, Sean, I want to talk about something. Okay. I want to talk about Joker. Uh, Foley Adieu. Is that correct? Uh, close enough. Foley. Uh, I always say Foley, but I don't know if that's right either. Foley, I do. No, I think you're right. Cause I think there's a tilde or something they're supposed to be. Um, I will say the weirdest thing happened that day. Um, I already told Sean this, or I sent him a video of it, but a half hour. I think the tweet came out from like discussing film or something that like, Oh, Todd Phillips just tweeted that the full trailer's coming out. Here's a 10 second teaser. Literally a half hour before that, I was talking to my buddies, Rasan and Jim, shout out. And I was like, I don't remember what we were talking about, but somehow Joker came out. It, it came up in the conversation. And I was like, man, we got to be getting close to like a teaser or a trailer, right? Because they, you know, we've already seen like the, the poster for it and stuff. It's got to be almost time. 30 minutes later, I get the freaking tweet. And I'm like, are, are you kidding me? Like, I am in the Matrix. I'm in the Truman Show. Just unplug me. I know what's going on, guys. I see it. I see it. The trailer. Um, they did say, so Todd, 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 
Todd Phillips did say, I screenshotted this, um, that he confirmed it is not, James, listen, it is not a musical. What he said at CinemaCon was that it's not a full-on musical, contrary to past reports. He instead described the music as a, quote, essential element, noting that Arthur Fleck always has has always had music in him. Um, what did you think of the trailer? Um, I definitely like it. Uh, I'm when the first one came out, I remember being like, eh, do we really need this? And not really knowing just what to expect. But as it got closer and closer, I'm like, oh my God, I think this is going to be really good. And it was. This one, I'm starting off like, oh my God, I can't wait to see it. I feel like it's my most... Well, Deadpool 3 is this year, right? So oh maybe my it's God, not my yeah. most anticipated movie, but it's way up there. Yeah. I'm a little worried that it's just not... I can't imagine it will be as good as the first. I hope I'm wrong, but like, it doesn't have to be as good as the first to still be really good. Um... I don't know. I'm I don't really know where they go from here. I could see them doing a whole movie and then at the end you find out he's still in jail. He never left jail and the whole thing was in his head and like yeah, Harley Quinn, Harleen Quinzel is like a real person and he saw her but like she's just a doctor and like never was Harley Quinn. Like I could see them doing that where like the whole movie was just all in his head. Um doesn't mean it wouldn't be good but it would be kind of like what what was the point of that yeah um but yeah i'm looking forward to it for sure i do think he's going to be the most if you think cloud strife is an unreliable narrator in final fantasy 7 og and the new ones i don't think we've seen anything yet like if you think back like i remember when it finally clicked with the first movie and i'm not going to spoil anything but when it clicked what was actually going on and you're like holy shit i've seen a lot of theories out there first off foil Foyle adieu, whatever you say. Do you know what that means? Uh, like tragedy of two or something of it's two. It's something where like two two people are linked in maybe not psychosis, but in some kind of mental issue aspect thing that they're both crazy. And if you go back, I watched the trailer a couple times. There's one time where it goes from them. I can't remember if they're dancing when they've got like that, that, you could tell they're on the set of like a Broadway musical or something and they're dancing. And then all of a sudden it cuts from them dancing in there to them dancing, like in a bar or something in real life. I don't think it's mm-hmm. going to be that the, the more I think of it, I don't think everything's going to be in his head. Obviously some of it's probably going to be in his head, but I don't think it's going to be all of it. I almost think like some people were saying, maybe it's like he goes back and forth, like, this is what is really happening, but in his mind, he's so in love with this woman that this is how he sees it. Like they're on a Broadway, you know what I mean? Um, right. The take that I saw that makes the most sense. And I was like, okay, this makes me so interested. And it's such a cool thing. Cause I still say, obviously this is not a typical Joker. I love the first movie. I thought it was a 10 out of 10. I'm glad he won the Oscar. I'm glad Todd Phillips won director or whatever. It won everything. I'm so happy. What somebody said they think is going on in this one is, first off, it doesn't seem like she's a doctor. It seems like she's an inmate. It is funny that she does the gun to the head thing, just like yeah. uh, Zazie Beetz's character. I can't remember her name. Um, and like Joker did in the first one. But that she's yeah. not a doctor in this one. And instead, like the Joker and Harley relationship, whenever it's done seriously, not really like Batman the Animated Show, but like whenever it's been in video games or animated movies and stuff like that, it's always been the suicide squad movie, the birds of prey builds off of this. Like everything has always been about how Joker is controlling slash corrupting Harley. Whereas in this, it looks like what they're doing is maybe it's actually this time it's Harley that's effing with Joker. And when you see like that, first off that last shot of the trailer, perfection. It is it is the perfection gif personified. She draws the smiley face when she draws the smiley face on the glass and he looks at it. That was perfect. 
And I'm like, it's not lining up. But then you see, you forget how big a smile Joaquin can make. And then it just ends up, it's it's lined oh, up it's perfectly. Perfect. Yeah. But when I'm looking at that, I'm like, hmm, maybe it is her being like, I don't know if this is like a visitation thing or whatever. Like he's on the other side of the glass, you know, at visiting hours or whatever they're called when you're in jail. I don't know. I haven't been, I'm not in jail, but um, that like he doesn't want, maybe he wants to get better. Maybe he realizes everything he did in the first one and he wants to be better, but she's like, no, that's not the real you. Come on, give me a smile. You know, I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm just so excited for it. I'm going to go in thinking it cannot be as good as the first one because I don't think it will be. However, one of the other reasons I've got my hopes up for this is a little movie called A Star is Born. And Lady mm -hmm. Gaga in that was freaking phenomenal. I still cannot believe that was what, 2018 or 2019? It got nominated for like, like everything. Actor, actress, Bradley Cooper is director, uh, you know, sound, everything. And it didn't win anything. I thought that was easily the best movie that year. Oh, actually, I think it was 2019. That might have been the same year as Joker, actually. Anyways, she was so damn good in that movie. She's not just a great singer. That that girl can act. Oh, she can definitely pull off Harley Quinn for sure. I'm not I'm not worried about that. So I'm very excited. Joker Foilier, uh adieu. I bid you adieu to this conversation. <laughs> Let us know what you think of the trailer down in the comment section below. But Sean, before we get into everything else. Last week's episode was not a regular episode. We did our predictions special for WrestleMania 40. First time we've done a predictions episode in five years. That tells you how excited we were for this. Um, so we haven't done this since... That was since... when I caught the pen. Was it really? Mm-hmm. That was before we even knew what COVID was. It was a year before COVID, obviously. Um, yeah. WrestleMania 40. I, I'm not going to go... Especially now that... We've had almost it's, a week. It's pronounced WrestleMania Fody. Fody. I'll get you a 40 and you a Fody. Um, I, I seriously, I'm, I'm so glad that you sent that because it just, once I saw like the ride along stuff pop up with Conan, I was like, you know what? It's been too long since I watched these two videos. I need to watch them again. I watched them both after that. Yep. Oh my God. They're so good. That that poor girl, the, the poor little girl that's on his his staff and they, they've got her smoking weed <laughs> with cube in the back and like kevin hart is high off his ass talking to the cop and you could tell the copy even though they blur out his face by the end he's like this it's kevin hart i can't what, what am i gonna do it's kevin hart I, I'm, I can't get mad at these guys they're blocking traffic who cares anyways what were we talking about oh yeah how did we get to that i don't know because oh, they said Fody. Fody. thank you sean so wrestlemania Fody. <laughs> We've had almost a week to sit on this. I am not going to say. I don't know that this was the best WrestleMania ever. It's also hard to do ever since they went to this two night thing. It's really hard to judge it as one WrestleMania. Does that make sense? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like WrestleMania 17. Is probably still the go. I, I hold WrestleMania 14 way up there as well, too, even though HBK was hurt. We had Undertaker versus Kane for the first time. Stone Cold versus Michaels, where he he gave everything. Even that's when he was still a jackass. And the you know the story goes, Undertaker was there at Gorilla, like with his fist tape up, like you better do the job or I'm going to literally kill you. Um, but this was one of the best WrestleManias ever. I will say that I think it's easily top five. There were a few matches, mostly night one, that were like eh. Overall, though. I thought it was a great WrestleMania. Sean, I think you agree, but what were your thoughts on WrestleMania 40 overall? I feel like overall, it was definitely one of the better ones. Um, the ending was perfect. Um, I just feel like none of the matches, just the matches themselves, like that match wasn't that great. I mean, all the stuff that happened in the match at the end, you know, the result and all that. But like the match itself, it was pretty good. I mean, I, it was it was pretty good for sure. But other than that, like none of the matches, I don't, I don't think were that great. Like it was cool that The Rock was there. We got to see The Rock wrestle, and we got you know like. But I feel like all the matches themselves. 
most were like decent to good at best. Um, that being said, it's easily the best one in the last, I mean, since I've since gotten back 30. into it. Yeah. Since 30 yeah. for sure. Yeah. Um, but yeah, couldn't have asked for a better ending. They finished the story. I'm already, <laughs> I watched You're raw. Right. Like I left WrestleMania. I'm like, I finally want to watch wrestling again, but it's still, and I watched hours. raw and I'm like, this wasn't that good. Yeah. Like, this was, this was the raw after mania. Like, you had a couple people from NXT wrestle, but they're yeah. both the champs, so it's not like they're getting called up. They just wrestled. Now they're going back to NXT. Okay. You had the man who can't be seen. Uh, he finally got to tag with his childhood Cena showed <laughs> prodigy. Up. Yeah. I mean, Cena was there for 10 seconds, but like nothing happened. You do a fatal four-way for number one contender, and two of the people in the match are Ricochet. And Ricochet big, and the big uh, Bronson. Bronson Reed. Like, these are two of the best four people you've got. They're not. To put in a match for number one contender? Like, what is happening? If you're and doing the four like, best wrestlers on Raw, I would say it's Drew and Jay right now. I, I love Jay. But then it would obviously be Punk and Rollins. But Punk wasn't in it for a reason. He's still healing, although I think right. it's pretty healthy. And then Rollins, of course, just that I think people were saying he's probably going to take about a month off and then come back. But, but like at first when I saw that, I'm like, Oh, I mean, obviously Drew's winning. And then I was like, wait a minute. No, he's not because he's got, he's got to do stuff with punk. punk. Yeah. He's got to win the title at, Clash at the castle or whatever. There's no way this is for the number one contender for that. Whenever that is, yeah. This I assume so, it was for. Yeah, backlash. he's not going to win this. So then I'm like, well, then it's got to be Jay. And even then, I'm like, Ugh. Jay's not winning the world title, even against no. stupid Damian Priest. Yeah, he should, but no, he's not going to. They, no. they wouldn't have gone through all that. That's one thing that, like, I kind of wish I could go back. I don't think I ever believed wrestling was real. At least when I started, I thought it was real maybe before I actually watched it. Um, but like, it would be nice to be able to just suspend disbelief and be like, oh my God, Jay, Jay might actually win the world title. He's not going to. He's not winning. They're the not going to put the yeah. title on somebody at Mania just to take it off of him in a, a match month. that has no storyline like in france it, it just doesn't make sense yeah yeah i assume it's did they ever say it's a backlash? they didn't say but i, I assume it, it's got to be backlash yeah so i'm already just kind of like what's the point like and yeah i'm a little worried i love cody but like you finish the story and now it's like now what? And I know he's smacked down at least till the draft. So obviously not a lot is going to happen on raw, but they're like, Hey, this is the day after mania. We got to have him here. But like that stuff with the rock. Yeah. He'll fight the rock at some point and everybody's Saudi saying summer slab or something. Everybody's but saying like, mania at this point, but I'm like, if you're saying it's going to be mania, then you're saying you're already saying Cody's going to hold it for a year. I don't know that that's for sure. That's the other thing. We've got to stop this. Like, I don't want title reigns there's to a be point where every two you had, weeks. Yeah. Right, like they used to do, but like not everybody needs to hold the belt for a year plus. Yeah. Like Roman had it for four years. Rhea's already over a year. Uh, Seth almost got there. Seth almost made it a year. Gunther was uh, a year. Gunther had years. it for two years. Yeah, like it's fine to just have like three, four month title reigns. Like it's fine. Not everybody needs to hold it for like nobody. We don't need to keep setting records. So yeah. I don't know. I'm sure Cody will continue to put on entertaining matches and stuff, but I'm like, that was definitely more about the chase and the moment of winning it. Now that he's champ, I'm like, eh, he'll lose it eventually. And I'm not going to be that heartbroken over it. Like, I don't know. It was awesome yeah. what they did, but I'm already like, uh, the, you, it's peaked already. Like, I don't know what you do now that could come close to living up to that. So I will we'll say see. though, maybe I'll be proven wrong, but I, well, that's what I was going to say. We got to give credit to triple H where it's due because a year ago when he lost, first off, I said, I'm never watching WWE again. This is so friggin' stupid. Why would you do this? And then fast forward a year and it was so much better him winning it the way he did. Not only was it the 
greatest main event. I'm not saying the best wrestling match ever. It was the greatest main event I've ever seen in any wrestling match in any promotion ever, because there was nothing more pro wrestling than that match. And those last five minutes, the only thing that could have been better is if it was stone cold instead of taker. Okay. Counterpoint. We were one like fan revolt away from them. Not doing it again. True. Like we were about to get Roman and rock and I don't know, I guess Cody and Seth, again like and that's not like that was vince and triple h saved it no that was triple h so i don't know i mean i'm glad it worked out but like we were pretty close to another bs move i will say he gets the pretend title silver medal thing you might as well just have him beat gunther and get the intercontinental title yeah yeah um i will say though the matches i agree with you and also like the the, the, the six man street fight didn't need to be there. It was cool that Bubba Ray was the, the uh, guest referee, the six man or the six woman match didn't need to be there. It was just to say, Hey, Jade Cargill. I don't know why is that like that? Jade Cargill rules. Here she is. There was another match, AJ and LA Knight. I can't stand LA Knight. I just think he's garbage. Fine. And AJ, first off, he's so yoked and roided out. It's ridiculous at this point, but it was a fine match. The matches I will say that delivered. That that is one thing I will say though about this. This is the most top heavy WrestleMania I think there's ever been. With yeah. Rock and Roman against Seth and Cody, and then Cody versus Roman. Like I almost think that's one of the reasons that night one was just so like in the opening match, Becky and Rhea ruled. I was gonna say that was probably the best match. I mean, Cody and Roman was good. It was fun. It was uh satisfying whatever but just like from a match standpoint uh yeah i think becky and Rhea probably had the best match and well and my the other one would be sammy and gunther that was so awesome i did not realize yeah un- until i went on the internet after that like he hadn't done a top row brain buster since he was el generico on the indies and he did it to win like the roh title or something i don't remember what it was but he did it to win some title so that was a huge callback, even though when it happened live, I said to Sean, I was like, what the, what, what just happened? Cause I think I blinked when he did the brain buster. So I was like, did he just blow out his knee? What happened? That match was awesome. And I do have to give credit where it's due. Not a big, not the biggest Bailey fan, but that match was really damn good as well. Yeah. And Seth and Cody was good. Or uh, Seth and what's his face. Drew was good. Drew. I still, I, I just don't, I don't get Damian Priest. Although I will say, as I've seen more interviews with him and the stuff like Jason's been sending, like he was at the Yankee game and stuff. I'm like, okay, I don't hate this guy. I just, it's like, I don't hate LA Knight. I just don't think he's a good pro wrestler. And I'm, I, I don't know that I think that about Damian either, but he had some interview. I think, I think I'm it, fine with Damian. Like, <sighs> how do I say this? I feel like that title is a third mid-major title. And I would be okay with, with him being intercontinental ti- uh, intercontinental champ. I'd be fine with him being U.S. Yeah. champ. World champ, this belt that they just kind of made up because they're like, well, we don't want Roman to have both. Uh, we need another title here. We'll just make one up. Here you go. It's just right off the bat. I'm just like, you have a long way to go before making this title seem legitimate. And Seth did a great job. And that was what I saw at one interview with Priest where he was completely out of character. And it was on WWE, uh, what, what is it called? The Bump. But he was completely out of character. And he was like, dude, like Seth made this title matter. He made this the workhorse championship. And I'm going to do everything in my power to live up to what he did to this title. And I was like, okay, I am starting to kind of starting to like you. Um, but yeah, we'll see. But I think it was just, like I said, it was the greatest main event that's ever happened in pro wrestling. Also, I think we talked about this though, those two nights, but they are saying pro wrestling a whole lot more now. I mean, they still say sports entertainment and stuff, but you can tell like they, they can say the word belt now and other stuff that Vince did not like, they're able to say right. it now. Um, and it was so good to see Stephanie. That made me so happy. But people have confirmed that, no, she's not back with WWE. It was a one-time thing. Also, Brandy Rhodes is not back with WWE either. That was a one-night thing to be there with Cody. Um, yeah, that was cool. Uh, one other thing I saw on Twitter that was like, oh, yep. 
somebody said that was Starcade 97 but done but much done better. correctly i'm like yeah. oh god yeah that's exactly yeah dude we bought that we paid for that thing i remember stupid nick patrick you're supposed to do a quick count but hogan hits the leg drop on sting and he just goes one two three and then it's like that's it hogan wins what what the hell was all this for <laughs> and then brett's like no, no 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 i say no even though it wasn't a quick count and then it's like now i'm the ref oh my god Speaking of that and the the whole the the airing the footage from All Out with Punk and Little Bitch Boy Jack Perry, I don't know what AEW was thinking. Did you really need to hype up the Young Bucks versus FTR by dragging this out and showing that Punk was 100% correct? Not only that, he beat the crap out of one of your wrestlers who's about to re-debut. What 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 are you doing? I I just do not I want them to do so well. I don't I want them to, but I'm also they're not. just kind of over it. Like I'm sick of giving them the benefit of the doubt. I yeah. think Tony's got to go like he's not a book. He's got to step like, back. Just be an owner. Yeah. You need to hire yeah. somebody like Heyman or even the more I listen to him on podcasts and stuff, Bully Ray, uh, someone that knows the business. Like that's what you need yeah. to do. I yeah. don't know. Um, and I do think the, the Raw after Mania, it started great. I love the video package that they made for Cody. All that was great. Rock comes out. That crowd, when the poor, whoever it is that's on the mute button uh, for the swears, <laughs> when they're saying, shut the up, up, and he has to keep going, okay, beep, beep, uh, beep, beep, uh, beep. And it was funny because at first he's like, okay, just beep, hold it down for like three seconds. Let me get the timing right. Okay, shut the beep, shut the up. And then they're chanting asshole. The best part though was when they when Rock was like, "Can I hold the title?" And now we've seen you know the backstory because Cody did that to Rock thirteen years ago or whatever it was. But when he is holding that belt and the crowd chants for the first time I've ever heard this in a wrestling event, this is awkward. Not this is awesome. This is awkward. And I was like, yeah, yeah. And I don't know if Rock got lost up there. AEW should hire Al Snow. That's a good call as well. Someone that is just a veteran that knows the business and knows how to book. I don't know if Rock got lost or what happened, but something just did not seem right. Like, yeah. I don't know if he was just completely thrown off. Like, he thought he was going to go out there and give Cody his flowers, so the fans were going to be like, we love you so much. We know you're going away, but no, they were like, no, F you. We'll, we'll pop for your entrance music because you're the Rock, but we hate you. And I don't know if he was thrown off, but it was weird. We don't know what he put in Cody's hand. I don't think they should drag this out for a year, but I don't know. We'll see. Directions and frequency on here for all things we talk about. I don't know what she's talking about. Um, so yeah, WrestleMania was awesome. Sean, let's get to the video games. We haven't done video games in a couple of weeks. So what have you been playing, sir? Um, I think last time we actually talked video games, I think I had already kind of just stepped back from uh, Rebirth. I haven't gone back. I don't know that I will at this point. I feel like I've done enough. Um, I don't remember what it's called. Um, Stellar Blade? Oh, I played Stellar Blade demo. Uh, it's not for me. So let's um, let's talk through that for because I, I played that as well. I wanted to like this, and maybe I still will, but I only played it up to that first boss, and I was like, something just felt off. And it seems like I'm in the minority with this, but something about the combat felt off. The, the I did not like the way the camera moved. I didn't like the lock-on stuff and how it would transition from one, or maybe it didn't transition. Maybe that's what it was. Maybe after you beat an enemy, it wouldn't just go to the next one or something. There was something that was off and felt weird about it. The actual combat itself didn't feel great. But again, we're at the very beginning of the game, I think. Um, so maybe that's yeah, why. I felt like it, it just, just nothing clicked. Like it. Yeah. I don't know if this just seems like the most generic game ever. Like it's not quite just a you know hack and slash it's not like devil may cry where it's just score 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 but it's also not uh soulsborne like it's not 
you can win pretty much every battle in the game by just going up and like attack, 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 maybe a dodge here and there, but like it's somewhere in between. And it's like, it just, it seems like it doesn't know what it wants to be, or maybe exactly what it is, is a genre of game that I've just never really gotten into. Like, uh, what's the one on Nintendo that's basically the same game or seems like it's the same game. Oh, Bayonetta. Bayonetta. Yeah. This is now how I assume Bayonetta is, not just because it's a chick, but like it just seems like it's just a very blah game that does some stuff okay, but nothing that great. I don't know. But it, it didn't it did nothing for me. Yeah, it, it didn't do it for me. I think I did delete the demo after I played. I was like, there's just yeah, it's not clicking. Like I want it to click. Cause I want, cause I don't care about rise of the Ronin. I kind of wanted to care about this. And I'm like, it's just, I don't know if this comes out and it's like a 92 on Metacritic or something. I'll be like, okay, let me do the demo again and see if I'm just missing something. But as of right now, yeah. I think it's a, I think it's a skip for me. Um, I did also that same weekend try, um, <clears throat> the cyberpunk demo. Oh, good. It's not for me either. Oh, man. It seems, it does seem cool, Mm -hmm. but it is so, 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 so overwhelming. Like every five minutes, it's like it's introducing a new concept, a new thing you can do or switch on the menus or install or upgrade or all these things. I'm like, oh my God, I can't. It's just, it was fun. And I like the combat. It's, it, I wouldn't say beautiful, but I mean, it, it looks good. It's got a certain look to it. Yeah, I enjoyed it more than Stellar Blade, but it's just too, it just seems like it's too much for me. It, I just, I don't know. And I think that's just how, because I had a similar feeling playing um, Witcher 3 back in the day. Like, I think it's just, there's just certain, I don't know if I'm just too old now or what, but there's a certain kind of game that I'm like, I just, I can't, it's not like it's too hard. It's not like I can't, I can't physically beat it, you know, or play well, but it just seems like there's, when there's that much stuff to do, I feel like I'm never going to be able to enjoy the game because I'm always going to feel like I'm missing something. So it was fun. I did enjoy it but I could tell it's, it's too much for me. Yeah. I, I do. Um, I do remember as much as I did end up liking that game when it comes to like upgrades and like your augments and stuff like this, I was like, I I'd probably upgraded about 10% of the stuff I actually could because it was so much. And I did, I will say, and I, I still had a blast with it and I pretty much just mainlined it. I did a few side quests and stuff, but, I ended up liking it enough just by, you know, mainlining most of it. But yeah. Um, so then mm-hmm. um I started playing Monster Boy and the Cursed oh. Cursed Cursed Kingdom. Yes. You know this game? Yeah, I the the Monster Hunter Boys, Monster Hunter Boys, Jesus. <laughs> I'm tired. The Van um, Buren boys. The Van Buren. <laughs> the, the what was the what was Shane McMahon's guys? The the Greenwich. The Mean Street Posse. Mean Street Posse from the Mean Streets of Greenwich. Um, yeah, I've played one a little bit. Oh, I think I might have actually played one on one of my Genesis minis. I can't remember. But aren't these kind of like side scrolling Zeldas? You know what I mean? No. So no? what it reminds me of, kind of, is not as good, but the gameplay, the the overall feel and flow of it is the messenger. It's a Metroidvania, but in the beginning, it's very, it doesn't seem like it's a Metroidvania. You kind of are just making your way through the, there's not individual levels. Like it's not like, Hey, you beat level one. Here's level two. Okay. But it's like, it's like a Metroidvania, but it kind of guides you through it. And it seems like it takes you to most of the world's. And I don't know if it's going to get to be like the messenger where it's like, by the way, now you got to go and do a bunch of other stuff and backtrack and collect these things. Or if it's like a Metroidvania that 
you never really have to do much backtracking. Like, I feel like I have not had to backtrack yet. There's kind of like a hub town area that you go back to to like kind of go to a new place. But like the map looks very Metroidvania. You, there's collectibles. There's, you know, uh, upgrades for your health. There's new abilities you get. It's very Metroidvania. Um but a lot of the different abilities are you just change your form. Okay. And this may be how all the games are. I don't know. I've never played any of them. But like you start as just a dude and then you get turned into a pig. I'm like, well, this sucks. I want to be the dude again because I had a sword and now I'm a pig with my little hoof. And all I can do is like, <laughs> <laughs> with like no range, but he can use magic. And I'm like, all right, let me get through this area so I can find the dude that turned me into the pig so he can turn me back into human. And then it's like, nope, now you're a snake. And really? Like, oh, God. And then you can switch back and forth because the snake can climb on things and you can get through little holes and the pig is the only one that can use magic. And then all of a sudden you get to be a frog and the frog can use like a grappling hook and can use a sword again. And then you get to be a lion. I'm like, I don't think I'm ever going to be human again at this point, but you have to keep switching between the forms. And do you do not... them for combat or just for like traversal? mostly like traversal the okay. you never really want to fight as the snake or the pig they both suck but, the, but can you the turn frog back and into, the lion into you can a boy switch or no? all on the fly i have not been able to yet okay i don't i'm guessing you can't because the frog and the lion kind of take the place of the boy like they're the ones that can whip all the different armors and use swords and whatever like the monster boy use magic i get it yeah yeah so i don't know it's fun um it's very much a i don't know what else to play so i'm gonna play this um but it's been fun i don't know there's some weird uh choices that were made in the development of this game i would say like changing between your magic spells and changing between the different forms just feels very clumsy and i don't know um yeah, Monster like Boy, hit... it's been around since the 80s. That's what I thought. There's a collection really? with 21 different games on it. Because this crap. started out on Master System and then came to Genesis. Really? And yeah. I did not know it was that big a thing. That's awesome. Sorry, keep going. Oh, uh, never mind. Like it's to... like one, two, three. It's like six games with a bunch of different versions of those games. So, okay, that uh, makes okay. more sense. But yeah, sorry. Um, like you have to to switch your forms. You have to hold L2. I think it's either or. L... I can't remember if it's L2 and R2 or just one. But like you hold it and like it brings up a wheel. And then you have to mm -hmm. hold like up and left or left or down and left or down and right to get to the form that you want. And then it's the same thing when you're switching your magics. You hold R1 and you hit like up or up and left or down and left or down and right, whatever. And I'm like, I'd rather just be able to tap them and like cycle through them. Like I'd much rather be like, hey, I'm a frog. And to get to the pig, I have to go R2, R2. Then R2 and hold and remember where he is. Oh, there he is. And hold it and let go. Like it's just, it just feels clumsy. But like the gameplay is, it's fun. I'm definitely enjoying it. Um I haven't even looked into a platinum. It's probably something that has missable things and I've already missed it, but whatever. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's fun. But uh, yeah, that's all I've played. So I, I will say that I just went on the PS app and I downloaded it just because I'd like to give it a try because I do think the only one I've ever tried Yeah, definitely. Was, I would check it out. It, it might have been like Monster Hunter 3 maybe or something like that. Monster not Hunter? Sure. Not Mo Monster Boy. Let me see. Monster Boy Genesis Mini. Wonder Boy and Monster World. Maybe that's what I'm thinking of. Yeah. That's the one I've played. Okay. Is that a totally different thing? No, that's still it. Oh, it's still part of the same series. Yep. Okay. Because I did, I do remember playing that one now. Okay. Yeah. I want to at least give this a try. Um, okay, cool. So, all I've really played, um, we talked about Stellar Blade. Sorry. I 
was up till like 1230 last night or one o'clock and woke up at six. Um, so yeah, Stellar Blade, I did that. But then I was like, I want to play something. And I was like, oh yeah, I talked about this on the last podcast that this is now free on PS Plus. I want to give it a try. Colin loves this game. I don't know about it. Immortals of Avium. First person magic shooter. So I was like, I'll give it a try, whatever. I, I will say I'm only probably like an hour and a half into it. Um, one of the things I thought was interesting is there's no graphics options and it seems like every kind of, now I know this is, it's published by EA. So I think of this as a triple A game, but this is this studio's first game they ever made. I think consequently, I, I just saw that they laid off the majority of their staff after this kind of underperformed. So, well, good try guys. But, um, yeah, uh, no graphics modes for the most part, it runs well, but there are sometimes like in the opening section, it's kind of like a prologue, not even a tutorial where you go through a prologue where you're going through this city and stuff and the, the city gets attacked and shit magic's everywhere. And it definitely drops for the most part at 60 frames. But when that was happening, it dropped to, I would say under 30, it looked like. Um, so that was fine. Then you get into the actual tutorial section of it. So you've got your magic. So you've got, R2 is your magic button. L1 is your shield. L2, eventually you get a whip. Not eventually. I mean, in the tutorial, they give it to you, but they're just getting you to learn everything. So what you could do with this whip, it's pretty cool. And I think this is what's going to be in Indiana Jones, but I'm not 100% sure. You can hold L2, and if there's an enemy all the way across the room, you go whip, and you bring it over, and then you can use your magic and just go pop, pop, pop. So right now I've got, I don't know how many different ones you get, but as you're going through the tutorial, you end up with three different magic gun things. You've got blue, which is your standard kind of whatever. It's just jack of all trades, master of none. You've got the red magic, which is like a shotgun. You only want to do that if you're close. So like what I would do is grab people with the whip, pull them over, and then I'd shotgun them. Um, and then you've got the green one, which is rapid fire, but it's not that accurate and it's not that powerful. Um, and you go through the whole tutorial area and everything. Um, the boss you fight there, I was like, this is, this is fun. I'm getting my butt kicked and I did end up beating it, but like I had to use a couple, you can push like right on the D pad, uh, to do like your bloodborne or souls, like give me my health back thing. Um, mm -hmm. and I had to do that twice, uh, almost died. I beat him. Um, so I've gotten through the prologue, the tutorial, and now I'm in, like it goes, and now five years later and you jump ahead and it's like, okay, now you're in the actual game. So that's where I stopped. But so far, I think I like it. Now, because it's free, this is the thing that always ends up being a struggle for me. And it's like when games are free on PS Plus or PS Plus Extra, whatever, when I haven't invested my own money into them, if, it, if the game is not fantastic, I don't always stick with it. So I don't know if I'm going to end up sticking with this, especially because there's a game coming out in a couple of weeks that we'll talk about later that I cannot wait to play. Um, I don't know if I'm going to stick with it. The, the one thing that I noticed too, the conversations in this, so it's a first person magic shooter, but the cutscenes are in third person and everything. You play as a dude named Jack, and I think, and it's spelled Jack, like Jack and Daxter, which I thought was funny. Um, and conversations in this are weird. Like I was noticing in cutscenes, like, like I'm Jack and I'll be like, man, you know what? I think we kind of need to go over to that Hill. And like, as soon as I say the last word of the sentence, the person I'm talking to immediately starts talking. Like there's no, like, okay, I'm listening to what you said. And now it's my turn. It's, it's not like a natural way of speaking. It's so weird. I don't know if it's going to be like that through the whole thing. Um, the map, sucks the map is straight out of jedi fallen order and i hated that uh, map. horrible now maybe the map's not gonna be a big deal i don't know how open this game is i don't know if i'm really just gonna be it, it has different chapters so i'm in chapter three right now but i don't know if this is like a linear game or if this is semi-open world or open world i'm not sure um you also get a different like uh magic power that like can manipulate so after they give you your three magic gun things then you learn this magic that you can look at something and you can like hold your magic button 
and it's like you grab it and like you grab this big statue and there's a jump there's like a opening you can't get across so you grab it with your magic and then you like use the the left stick to kind of like make it go and it goes down it turns into a bridge that's cool um the one thing i do like is you do get unlimited ammo with your magic which is a funny thing to say but <laughs> you get unlimited ammo you just push square to uh refill what's the word that's not the word reload reload um okay or you if you just you use your last shot you'll reload then so it's not a big deal um but it's like your shotgun i think you only get like three or four shots your blue one you get maybe seven and then the green one the rapid fire one is probably like 15 or 20 um and you can also hit circle to dodge you can use l1 to bring up a shield but you can only use the shield for so long because you've got a meter that's running out um it's really cool so far i'm I'm not singing its praises like Colin was. Um, but so far I like it enough that I think I do want to keep going with it. So we'll see how it ends up. Going. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I may have to check it out again. There's nothing else I really want to play for a couple of weeks. And then the, but the one I'm really looking forward to is a 20 year old game that comes out, you know, next month or 23 year old. Game. When did that come out? Thousand year. Was that? Oh, two. Uh, it, no, it was 2004 or five because uh, okay. I was in college. Yeah. Oh, four or five. Okay. I can't wait. I cannot wait to play a 20 year old game. I can't freaking wait. <laughs> so that's all I've been playing. Sean, would you like yes. to get to the news of the week? It's nice to actually have something to talk about. I must say. Let's do it. I'm I'm gonna forget to put the the video in there because I'm so tired. But we'll, I'm just gonna leave this <laughs> in because it's funny. Um, just imagine that I put the video in. All right, Sean. We got some more details at, at this point. Announce the friggin' PS5 Pro. Come on. So we got some details again from Insider Gaming on uh, what PS5 Pro Enhance is actually going to mean. And I kind of like this. I hope I'm understanding it correctly, but this also comes from Insider Gaming as it did a couple weeks ago. They write, with the soon-to-be-announced PS5 Pro expected to hit shelves later this year, Insider Gaming has learned of the developer requirements that need to be met to have the PS5 Pro Enhanced label. Internally, this is currently called the Trinity Enhanced label, but for the sake of SEO, we'll be referring to it as PS5 Pro, Fan Pro Enhanced moving forward. I love that for some reason, just them writing that. They're like, yeah, we're going to call it what we think people are searching for. I love it. <laughs> The enhanced label first made its introduction into the PlayStation ecosystem following the release of the PS4 Pro, which meant that the game utilized the Pro console's improved hardware to offer improved frame rates and resolutions. For the PS5 Pro PlayStation, for the PS5 Pro, there, there should be a comma there. PlayStation wants gamers to offer a, wants games, I can't talk, games to offer a PS5 Pro exclusive graphics mode that will combine a PS5 Pro exclusive graphic graphics mode that will combine PSSR upscaling to 4K, a constant 60 frames per second, additional or increased ray tracing effects. According to documents sent to Insider Gaming, this is possible because a faster RAM, 28%, but faster, a faster GPU that is 67% larger than the standard console and 45% faster. You can read more. Yeah. PlayStation says these combined make the Pro 45% faster than the standard PS5 and can provide twice the rendering speed of the standard console. PlayStation goes on to continue. The games may also be given the PS5 Pro enhanced label if they offer any of the following enhancements. This is where I get lost. Increased target resolution for titles that run a fixed resolution on the standard console. Increased target maximum resolution for titles that run at variable resolution on the standard console. Increased target frame rate for titles that target a fixed frame rate on the standard console. Inclusion of PS5 Pro ray tracing effects. If you're going to say something's PS5 enhanced and it's just got better ray tracing, I don't like that, Raymond. Yeah, I feel like it goes from saying... Exactly. You need all of them to get the label, and then it goes on to say, but if they have any of these, which are more or less the same things, as long as you have one of them... But not combined. Still get the label. Like, yeah. Yeah, I don't get that. 
So what do you think? I, I will say, because we go back and forth and like they say here that like Digital Foundry said, hey, don't expect GTA 6 to run at 60 frames a second necessarily on PS5 Pro. But um, at this point, I don't know what to believe because like you said, PlayStation wants games to offer a PS5 Pro exclusive graphics mode that will combine PSSR to upscale to 4K, a constant 60 frames, and add additional or increased ray tracing effects. That's what I want. If they could guarantee that for basically every game or every game that I care about, a 4K 60, that's what I want. That will make me say, okay, you might get me, but what do you think about the PS5 Pro enhanced? Well, I mean, the other thing is you can say all these things and... Yeah, if you get this, this, and this, we'll give you a PS5 Pro enhanced label. But uh, if that's like only 10 games that get that, I mean, like... It, it doesn't mean it's standard, yeah. As much as I love my PSVR 2, they're not really supporting that. Why should I believe that they're really going to support this and that we'll get this huge collection of titles that are really... Night James. Make the PS5 Pro worth it yeah i don't know i have no reason to believe that yeah um i'm excited but again it's it's really at this point it, it is crazy that we are getting more and more information on the ps5 pro than we are the switch to the super switch the switch U, whatever they're going to end up calling this thing you know <laughs> yeah but i guess it makes sense if the pro is coming out this fall and the switch we assume has officially been delayed internally to next year i don't know I'm excited. I just wish, I hope a lot of the games get that PS5 Pro enhanced label. But again, if I don't buy the thing, then I don't really care. So <laughs> we'll see. Right. At this point, Sony just needs to, to, to talk about it and then we'll know what's actually going on. Next item on the news list, the KOTOR remake is alive and well. This comes from IGN. Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic remake is one of gaming's most elusive project. Announced in 2021, the long-awaited remake has changed hands multiple times, multiple times, seemingly stopped development and restarted again, and after six years of development has yet to manifest. Fortunately, we finally have a real concrete update on what's going on. Saber Interactive is still working on it, and according to the CEO, it is, quote, alive and well. Speaking to IGN in an interview, Saber Interactive CEO Matthew Karch, that seems like an AI-generated name, Confirmed that the company took KOTOR with it during its split from Engracer. Embra Engracer. That's a name for a video game company, not Embracer. And that the game is still in active development. Quote, it's clear and it's obvious that we're working on this, he said. It's been in the press numerous times. What I will say is the game is alive and well, and we're dedicated to making sure we exceed consumer expectations, end quote. Karch would not for offer further details, but in an investor call following the announcement of Saber's departure, Embracer CEO Lars Wingenforce implied the KOTOR remake may still be a long ways away. The game has undergone a long limbo, having been announced in 2021 after three years of development at Aspire, paused indefinitely due to lack of progress, and revived again at Saber Interactive. There have been min minimal updates since. So yeah, this game was announced three years ago. We have seen eight seconds of this game, and really, all that was was a CG just... And that was it. KOTOR remake. Mm -hmm. I want this to be a real thing because I've never played... I, I can't remember. Have you played KOTOR? Probably not because it was Xbox. No. Yeah. Yeah. Do you... Uh, the, the thing that I find funny... Wait, let me go back down here. Is when he says, it's clear and it's obvious that we're working on this. Eh, is it though? Is it though? <laughs> yeah. It's been three years <laughs> since we saw anything on this game. We've had reports that it was killed because Aspire was doing a horrible job and then it went to Saber and then you guys got bought out. And like, I, I don't know. Do you think we're ever going to actually be able to play the KOTOR remake? And if so, do you think it actually comes out on PS5 or is this a PS6 game at this point? I have almost no hope that this game will ever come out. I, I just, I don't. I'm not going to get my hopes up because I don't I don't feel good about it. If it ever does, I'm almost certainly going to get it, you know, day yeah. one. Yeah. But I, just, I mean, unless I it's garbage, don't really see it happening. Yeah. I hope it's true. I hope it is obvious that it's still being worked on, but I'll, I'll believe it when we actually see not when we see this game again. I'll believe it when we actually see gameplay of this game. Then I'll be like, OK, yeah. I trust you. It's actually happening. But again, 
Is Saber Interactive even going to do a great job with it? I don't really know. Last item on the news list, Sean, this is just a fun one uh, that surfaced over the last week. And I never thought this would be a story. Also, this has been on the inter interwebs for like two or three years or something. I can't believe it, when it got uploaded, I can't believe it took forever to show to some, for somebody to find it. But here we are. This comes from Eurogamer. There was a canceled Nolan vs. Batman game that actually ended up turning into Shadow of Modor. Again, this comes Mordor, not Motor. This comes from Eurogamer. Gameplay footage showing the Batman game that evolved into Shadow of Mordor has appeared online. Once upon a time, developer Monolith was working on this Batman project with the hope it would tie in with Christopher Nolan's Dark Knight film series. However, the game was eventually scrapped, reportedly in part due to the film's director never officially giving the idea his blessing. I can picture Chris Nolan being like, you're not turning my, yeah. my cinematic masterpiece into a stupid video game. Yep. Yeah. A 2019 episode of Did You Know Gaming reported this canceled Batman project, which was codenamed Apollo, would have featured a variety of stealth and combat mechanics inspired by the Arkham games, open world technology, and the foundation of what would eventually become Shadow of Mordor's Nemesis system. Nemesis system, I mean. <laughs> now a collection of images and snippets of gameplay from the canceled Batman project have made their way online. Shared to social media platform X. Why are people calling it X? I know it's X. Stop it. It's Twitter. Stop it. These show a glimpse at Batman gliding over the streets of Gotham, the game's Batmobile, which was the Tumblr, gadget loadouts, stealth sequences, and more. But as we know, this game never made it to completion. As Twitter user Spidey Ranger notes in their thread, Warner Brothers didn't think that having two Batman gaming franchises was a great idea. So the Batman game was retooled into a Lord of the Rings project, and that's how we got Shadow of Mordor. While Monolith didn't get to release its Batman game all those years ago, it is currently working on another DC-related game, Wonder Woman. Have you had a chance? Did, did you see any of these pictures or quick video clips or anything of this? This is phenomenal. No. When, when we get off here, just, just look up canceled Batman game. It's... It looks like, like Nolan's... it looks good or it yeah. looks so bad that it... no, oh, okay. it looks good. I mean, in Shadow of Mordor, I have not played it. I think it's probably in my PS plus library because I think it was on PS plus at some point. Um, the Nemesis system is supposed to be amazing. It would work perfectly with a Batman game. Hmm. It is funny, though. It is. I, I can see how it would be confusing because when you watch this, it does look like it's Christian Bale doing Batman Arkham combat. Which would really, really confuse people. Because you've already got Arkham and Arkham. I think at this point, yeah, because Asylum came out in 09. I think this was canceled around 2010 or 2011. What were you going to say? I was just going to say, it seems weird. Granted, I don't know the first thing about video game development. But it feels it seems weird that they would just start making this batman game and be like well i sure hope they let us make a batman game and then be like oh we can't make a batman game uh let's change it to something else like shouldn't that be one of the first things you do i don't, I don't understand that but right like what other licenses do we have oh wait we got lord of the rings scratch that uh make him what's his name aragorn and we'll do that instead <laughs> and it's not going right. to be cities in, Go in gotham anymore it's going to be <laughs> fantasy setting and everything but um it's just cool to see stuff like this when it actually finally comes out. Um, you know, a game that was canceled 13 years ago or 12 years ago, something like that. Uh, it's really cool. And of course it's Batman. I'm going to pay attention. That is it for the news, Sean. Let's go through the wrap up and get out of here. Star Wars outlaws. Got a story trailer, the release date leaked ahead of time, but it is actually coming out this year, August 30th question. Does it actually come out that date or does it get delayed? I just kind of operate under the assumption that everything is going to be delayed. So I think it'll be delayed. What do you think of Outlaws? I'm not sold. I like the setting, but I don't. Yeah. It's something's not clicking for me. I don't know. I, I feel like. Uh, Mandalorian pulled it off, but for the most part, I don't really, it's hard to get interested in Star Wars if there's no 
lightsabers. Like mm-hmm. uh, that's what I think of when I think of Star Wars and even Mandalorian ended up bringing Jedis in like we still have right. lightsabers in Mandalorian. So, I mean, and it was good even before they did, but like that's what they I couldn't want help out of my Star Wars games. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm not sold yet, but as we see more of it and Ubisoft is going to show more of it this summer, obviously. We'll see. Hollow Knight Silk Song has been raided in South Korea. I got to think. Give me hope. That gif. I got to think it's going to get its final actual release date, either at Xbox's show this summer or a Nintendo Direct this summer, is my guess. It's got to come out this year. It has to. Xbox had, I don't remember if it got taken down or not, but it actually showed up on the Xbox store where you can add it to your wish list. It has to come out this year, right? I sure hope so. It's more real than the KOTOR remake. I know that. Uh, Probably, yeah. I'll give you that. I hope so. Although I'm not drafted. If, if I almost would just be like, you know what? Screw it. I'm not drafting it again next year. Somebody else can have this stupid game. And then it'll come out and get like a 95 on Metacritic. Uh, PlayStation Showcase is rumored to be coming in May. And Silent Hill 2 is said to be featured at it. Silent Hill 2 has also been rated in Korea as well as by the ESRB. So this game is really freaking close. I hope it looks better than it did at the last state of play or whatever it was when it was shown off because that was not great. Yeah, that wasn't doing it for me. No. Uh, Hellblade 2 got some previews and it runs at 30 frames per second and a dynamic resolution. So I don't get that. If it's going to be locked to 30... You can't hit 4K. This game looks like from every time we've seen it, it looks so beautiful. But you're going to have a dynamic resolution. It's just weird to me. Also, I just, this game is so confusing to me. I guess we'll see when it comes out. There's no graphics modes. Speaking of what, like what I was saying with Immortals, there's no quality mode. There's no performance. There's nothing like that. It just is what it is. You can only get over 30 frames per second on the PC version. Uh, Also, it's funny because the visual director came out and said, it's going to make it feel more cinematic like movies that are recorded at 24 frames per second, like the Lord of the Rings, whatever, not the Lord of the Rings, the Bilbo Baggins. What was that movie? The Hobbit. Hobbit. The Wicked Hobbit. I don't know. I'm interested. This game could be anywhere from a 70 on Metacritic to like a 93, I think. I don't know what to expect. We'll see. What is Xbox doing with all these teraflops they got over there that they can't even get games to run at 60 frames per second? Not only that, remember, Sarah Bond said that the next console is going to be the greatest leap, the biggest leap in gaming technology that has ever happened. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Embracer Group has officially sold off Gearbox to Take-Two. So that means Take-Two now owns Borderlands, Tiny Tina, Homeworld, Risk of Rain, Brothers in Arms, and Duke Nukem. I don't think they're going to be making a new one of those, but you never know. Also, as part of this, it was confirmed in a QA and a that border, the, they said the next Borderlands, which is obviously Borderlands 4, is an active development. I also wrote down, duh. Yeah. Uh, Evil Empire, the developer that created Dead Cells, uh, it was rumored that they were working on a new Prince of Persia roguelite game, and then it was con- confirmed at this PC show yesterday. The game is called The Rogue Prince of Persia. And it is coming to Steam early access this year. And I think they said it's also coming to some consoles, but it's like, okay, this doesn't look great. I don't like the art style of this. It doesn't look like dead cells at all to me. It's not pixely. It just looks like kind of like flash, you know, like old flash cartoons and stuff. I don't, I don't like, Yeah. I like the way the actual Prince of Persia game looked a lot better than this, but we'll see. Apple is going to allow game emulators on the app store as long as they quote, comply with all applicable laws End quote. What, why? Oh, this is not going to end well. This is not going to go the way you think it is. <laughs> Whoever puts like, <laughs> what, what was the old uh, SNES one that we all played back in the day? What was it called? The emulator. Yeah. It had a, it had a cool Z- name. Uh, Oh my God, I can't what was remember. that? 
That's going to drive me nuts. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. Now. It's going to be interesting when this happens, I guess is what I'm saying. There's a lot of reports going back and forth on this, but it seems that EA developer Motive was working either on a Dead Space 2 remake and then it got canceled, or they were working on a new Dead Space game that also got canceled because the original remake did not sell well. That blows my mind. EA says there's no truth to it. Grub says, believe who you want. If you want to believe EA over me, that's fine. Then Schreier comes in with his own report. I don't know, but this sucks. Dead Space was so friggin' cool. I cannot believe that it didn't hit their sales expectations. That's what I don't get, like... Final Fantasy 16 that seemed like everybody was playing it and everybody was talking about it and everybody liked it and it like it disappointed and I feel like yeah. it's the same thing with this like how is this even possible like what kind of what kind of sales did you need for it to be a success and that's a whole other yeah. conversation to have but it's frustrating um it was announced that Xbox is forming a new division around game preservation. Sarah Bond announced. It's just funny that they're doing this. Like you're already like at the forefront of game preservation with backwards compatibility. So I don't really understand what this, like, didn't you already do this? I'm, I'm just so confused, but they said, um, didn't they're, we already have a George? Exactly. They're, they're reported to share a lot more details around their rumored showcase, which has all been, all but been confirmed to be taking place in June. Also reports came out this week that Xbox will be revealing gear six and this year's call of duty at their summer showcase. Shocking. Um, we do need to do predictions for summer game fest, I guess for not E3. I guess we can't predict gear six. Cause that definitely would have been one of mine. If this didn't come out, I've been like, obvious, I'm just going to keep predicting it every year until it happens. So. Brad. Amazon's Fallout show launched early and it is a huge critical success and it's already been renewed for season two. Are you interested in this? I wasn't, but I'm kind of starting to be. It seems like the kind of thing that maybe I've never, I've only played Fallout 3, Game of the Year edition, mm -hmm. and I didn't care for it. But it seems like something that could be a better show than a game. So I'm, I am interested in it. Yeah. I don't care about the VAT system and all that crap, but the world itself, just, just thinking of the world itself, like nuclear Holocaust, you all go down into these vaults, you have babies and stuff. And a hundred years later, whatever it is, you finally resurface. And now there's all these crazy nuclear irrad irradiated, you know, aliens and beings and stuff. I, I think it sounds, I'm definitely very interested in it. And when I saw this was like a 93 or whatever on Rotten Tomatoes for the whole season, I was like, okay. I think I'm going to have to watch this. Yeah. Also, the boys season four is officially wrapped and it's coming out in June. I can't wait. I binged the hell out of that show. It's so good. You got to watch it, man. Oh my God. It's so good. Along with the success of the fallout show, it was announced today that fallout four is getting a PS five. It's finally getting a current gen patch for PS five and Xbox series consoles on April 25th. You will be able to get up to 60 frames per second along with increased resolution. There will be performance and quality modes. Nobuo Umatsu will, has announced that he will be composing the main theme for whatever Final Fantasy VII Remake Part Three ends up being. Hell yeah. Like, he's the OG, right? He's the GOAT when it comes to Final Fantasy? Yeah. Minecraft, it's rumored to finally be getting a native PS5 version soon. Now, you might say, like I used to, who cares? It's freaking Minecraft. But I will say when I've seen all these let's plays that my kids watch and stuff, people that play Minecraft, like on PC with rate, I'm like, why do you need ray tracing in Minecraft? I don't know why, but when you've got ray tracing in Minecraft, oh my God, it looks amazing. You wouldn't think so, really? but it looks amazing. So I'm interested to see what the PS5 version en ends up being. Quick note here that Hell's Div Hell Hell's Divers, Hell Divers Two sales in the UK are outpacing Spider Man Two over the same time frame since its release in the UK. So not now versus then, but yeah, now versus then, not now versus now. It's selling better right. than Spider Man Two. Now it's only the UK, but it just tells you it just goes to show what a freaking crazy success Hell Divers Two ended up being. I never, I never thought it was going to be this. It's awesome. 
This next one's interesting. Jim Ryan, in an interview on his way out of PlayStation, just kind of dropped this that now the PlayStation 2 has actually hit 160 million units sold. And I said, wait, what? We have not gotten an update on PS2 sales since 2012 when they said it ended up at 155 million units sold. Now, sure, places like Brazil and stuff like that, emerging markets, whatever, they sell these consoles for a lot longer than other places do. But Palin said this on the podcast, and it's like, yeah, this is what I was trying to say, but a lot smarter than what I was, what I could make the words for, as I can't make words. <laughs> yeah, maybe they've sold 5 million more in 12 years. But the weird thing is you got to think that like when they said 155 million, the reason they announced that number is because they probably only made 155 million PlayStation twos. Like did they lose track of 5 million of these things and not realize they were still out there to be sold? I don't know. But now, yeah, so that's now weird. So the number one selling console has now gone from 155 to 160. So it's, it's going to be even harder for the switch to get to it. We'll see. But I just thought this was that that was crazy when I saw it. Stellar Blade has officially gone gold, coming out here in a couple of weeks. Vampire Survivors is finally <laughs> coming to PlayStation this summer, and I cannot freaking wait. Also, Greg Miller sucks, but the developer tweeted him and says it does have a platinum. It's probably gonna be crazy. It's gonna be a pot. Like to I told it. you, I texted you yesterday. I was like, yeah, I think it it'll seems have like a platinum. The kind of game. But I mean, it seems like the kind of game that, yeah, maybe I feel like it may be a longer platinum than just a hard platinum. It seems like the kind of game that you just grind, grind. If you just grind and grind and grind. You'll, you'll, that's true. Be able to do everything you need to in the game. Kind of like power wash my, you know, 110 hour platinum or whatever it ended up being. But that was mostly because the stupid, right. because the trophy was borked. But oh, and they did fix the rebirth. Did you see that the update today or yesterday? I can't remember. Oh, uh, really? It fixed the platinum trophy bug. So yeah. Uh, Margot Robbie. Not only is she making a Sims movie, which I said was jumping the shark and going too far with video game adapt adaptations. Now we've got a board game adaptation for Margot Robbie, who is now making a Monopoly movie. What are we doing? <sighs> Like, I get that everything is a comic book movie or a sequel or a reboot or a remake. I get that. And I want new ideas in Hollywood, but I don't want this. I don't want a Sims movie and a Monopoly movie. What are we doing? I feel like Sims kind of makes a lot of sense. It'll just be like Barbie. It, right. If you do it very meta. Yeah, exactly. I can see that. Monopoly. I don't know. I don't know how you do that one. But no. the Sims, I think, makes perfect sense. Yeah. I wouldn't say perfect, but it makes sense. Um, last couple items here. PS Plus Extra Games were announced for April. Tales of Kinzara Zhao is launching into PlayStation Plus Extra on April 23rd, I think. Um, this is a dope-looking Metroidvania. This is the game I was alluding to earlier that I'm excited to play, and it's going to be free. This is one of those that... I don't care that it's free. I'm going to be all in on this one. I cannot freaking wait. Also, Dave, the diver comes up <laughs> the diaper. Dave, the diver comes out April 16th. Uh, some of the other games coming this month are construction simulator, the crew Two, Lego Ninjago deliver us Mars, Lego Avengers, and more. Those were the games I feel felt like I should call out, but I don't think I really needed to call out any of them other than the crew Two. but whatever. Also, PS Plus Premium Games for April were announced as well. We're getting Alone in the Dark, the new Nightmare from PS1, Star Wars Rebel Assault 2 from PS1, and the PS1 version of Medieval. Interesting, since they did the PS4 remake and nobody bought it, but Medieval. It's coming back. Mm -hmm. It's coming back, baby. That is it for episode 354 of the Two-Player Co-op Podcast. Thank you all so much for being here. Uh, probably not going to do an episode next week because it's already it's Thursday night and I don't think anything crazy is going to break over the weekend, but you never know. But until the next time, Sean, gonna take us out. Thank Nesticle. You wait, wait. Thank you for playing, John. I finally looked at the chat. <laughs> Nesticle. That's what I was thinking of. Yes. Yep. I had that one. Gearbox was the developer and creator. Gearbox didn't own the IP. Okay. Nesticle. God almighty. Oh, Fallout scory and funny. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Thank you, John. I should have checked the chat before that, but I was running through the through the wrap up. Now, Sean, go ahead and take us out. Thank you for playing.